Wow, it's great to see so many people here today. President Gutov, Mayor Whaley, MP Lake, MLA Anderson, Inspector Konitsky, regional mayors and councillors, school board superintendents and trustees, friends. Thank you for welcoming me here today. And thank you to Jennifer Garys and her team at the Leduc Regional Chamber of Commerce. I tell you what, they give us this opportunity to speak every year, but they're the, here for us year round. And I think they deserve a hand of applause. <laughs> Mayor Whaley and I are thrilled to see such a great turnout to hear what has happened and is happening in our region. Not only our friends and neighbors and businesses in the Leduc region, but also mayors and councillors from 10 municipalities in the Edmonton metropolitan region and beyond are here. And we thank you for your support. I'm very proud of our team. Clearly, we are fully aligned in the vision of where we want to go. But it's also clear that we may have different ideas as how to get there. But that's healthy. There are no cliques or alliances. We each take the information that is presented to us. We engage in very vibrant debates. And then we make decisions. Whether those decisions are unanimous or a 4-3 split, we operate and pull together as a team. We are all strong leaders and ambassadors of our community and the region. I know I'm stating the obvious when I say we're experiencing hard times, and we know the next year or two will be tough. But I want you to remember this. By not overspending in the good times, by building our reserves, by making sure our infrastructure, like roads, are well maintained, and through sound financial principles, we will continue to be a safe, healthy, accessible, and caring community. We will weather this storm. And we'll do it together as citizens, as a community, and as a region. In 2015, we experienced steady growth in our population to more than 29,300 residents, which you can see is a 2.5% increase over 2014, and a 72% growth rate in population since 2006. Permit values did take a hit with a reduced number of new residential units built in the community. From 637 in 2014, which was one of our best years, at, uh, but also included 100 apartment units, to 324 in 2015. As you can see in this slide, although we saw a residential decrease in 2015, we had a slight increase in non-res, or commercial, institutional, and, and industrial development, compared to 2014. In total, we had $255 million in new construction starts in 2015. One of our long-term strategies has been to concentrate on our non-res development in an attempt to achieve a 60-40 assessment ratio. That's 60% residential and 40% non-res. As I've stated before, planners call that a well-balanced community. 10 years ago, we were at 7624. And this year, we are at 6832. And I have to tell you, it's really hard to move the needle because new jobs bring new people and more people encourages more businesses to locate here. 
So think of it this way. For every 1,500 new residents, we need a quarter section of new non-res development at the same time in order to change the ratio by one. So we're very proud of the progress to date. Over the past decade, we have had $2.25 billion of new construction in the city of Leduc. And that's just above ground. Add in the sewers, water lines, and other underground services, as well as roads, sidewalks, etc. And construction starts in the last 10 years, represents well over $3 billion. That's a lot of growth in 10 years. I've heard an interesting way to understand the difference between a million and a billion. It's a million, it's a billion, it's a million, it's a billion. Um, and that gets thrown around quite a bit. But here's how it was explained to me. A million seconds equals just over 11 days, while a billion seconds is equal to 31 years. A million seconds, 11 days, a billion seconds, 31 years. It sure illustrates that a billion is a lot of money. <laughs> the prosperity we've had over the past number of years was great while it lasted. Things are tight right now. We see that. And we know the economic forecast isn't really warming up in our immediate future. Yet we can meet this challenge head on. As you saw, we are not stagnant despite the current economic downturn. We may not have seen the same level of growth as in previous years, but we're still seeing increases and expect that to continue. As leaders, we may not have control over every factor, such as the price of oil. However, we can influence how we rise above these tough times. Many of you in the audience will remember Mark Labors. He grew up in Leduc. His parents were both teachers here, and Mark also became a teacher. He then became a successful realtor here in Leduc before leaving to teach English as a second language in Japan. He's lived there over 20 years. But we always get together when he comes back to town, and uh, he was here over Christmas. And so we got together for lunch, and we were just chatting about all kinds of things and uh, what was successful in Japan and sort of what's the culture and, and how, how people get along with each other and all of those kinds of things. And, and how the Japanese are so good in business and manufacturing. He called it Kaizen. Kaizen. The practice of continuous improvement. And I knew right there what my theme was going to be for this talk, talk. Embracing this idea means not being afraid of what we see in the mirror. And to be humbled enough to identify where we can be better and do better for the communities we serve. So how were we able to see such growth and success as a community over the last number of years? It's because we've been unknowingly practicing the basic Kaizen principles. These guiding principles are as follows. Good processes bring good results. See things for yourself. Speak with data managed by facts. Take action and work as a team. So let's look at each principle and see how it applies to what we are doing in Leduc. Strong financial principles, a corporate planning calendar, aggressive community input, long-range planning, a clear vision, and a fiscally manageable way to get to that vision. Those are some of the good processes we follow. A good example of this was our four-year commitment to invest in the area of protective services. This year marks the fourth and final year of our 2% per year financial investment that has allowed us to better support emergency service delivery. 
Last year, it was a new firehouse. And this year, it's additional RCMP, a community peace officer, and the administrative support that they need so that they can be out in the field and not tied to a desk. And thanks to responsible fiscal planning, as well as enhanced relationships with partners, we were able to complete several projects in 2015, including a new splash park, our new public library, a new park playground called Meadowview Dinosaur Park, renovations to the Alexandra Outdoor Pool, upgrades to William F. Lady Park as we prepare for those great summer games that are coming up this summer. And we were able to officially open Leduc Firehouse number two in our city's west end. We are also investigating new ways of doing business, reinforcing what we're doing well, and identifying efficiencies in the programs and services we provide. For example, our public services department saved in excess of $100,000 through various means, such as how we manage our snow storage facility, altered our waste collection schedule with our contractor, found ways to recycle more materials, and struck a deal with local developers and landscape contractors for valuable materials to benefit our parks and green spaces. We also introduced CityView, a new online and mobile-friendly software within our planning and development department. It will better assist our staff and customers for plans, permits, inspections, and subsequent reports. It's a paperless system where we can work electronically to accept all these applications, as well as send reports, approved plans, and permits. It saves us people hours, it saves time for developers and builders, as well as drastically reducing the amount of paper we, that was needed under the old system. Our council is out there every day, listening and learning firsthand what is important to our citizens. We shop in your stores, we coach local teams, we support and attend local events, and we participate in local community organizations. Administration and council also attend regional, provincial, and national conferences and events to hear about best practices and the latest trends and technologies that will benefit our community and the region. For example, the airport mentioned to us that they were able to switch their telecommunications contract to align with the Alberta government contract and that it saved them money. That conversation led us to ask if we could do the same. We have now switched over and are seeing significant reductions in our monthly telephone and internet costs. I've said already that our council has a clear vision and that we take the time needed to move forward with that vision so that we get it right as much as possible the first time. For example, let's look at our downtown redevelopment plan. Planning the game uh, began in 2010. We held discussions with merchants, had focus groups, and brought in a leader in downtown redevelopment projects to talk about successful plans in Canadian communities large and small. By 2012, we had a downtown master plan that provided us a vision and concepts that fit our community. It was a broad brush that provided a baseline for further work. From there, we had another open house, focus groups, much, con much consultation with the downtown business association, and work with consultants. We narrowed our focus and got into the fine details. And from that, more data. And, ev and the eventual redevelopment plan that was adopted in early in 2015. About mid-year, we went out to tender um, in 2015, but those tenders came back much too high. 
And so we delayed the project until 2016. And that actually turned out to be a good thing. As several businesses came to us with concerns regarding the loss of some parking directly on Main Street. We were able to take another look at the plan and as a result make some minor on-street changes as well as add additional parking stalls close to Main Street. We had the data and it was time to manage. We knew there were risks moving forward but also risks in delaying. We recognized that another look at the project would likely mean a one to three year delay and with the new outlet mall at the airport scheduled to be open in 2017, work had to be done now. That mall will bring thousands and thousands of people to our community. I've been told that the trading area, so that's the uh, catchment area of people that will, will come to stores in Leduc or in this case to the mall that's at the airport. So for that mall, for a typical outlet mall, the, the trading area is six hours. That means we're going to have people coming from Grand Prairie, from Fort McMurray, from Saskatoon, Lloyd Minster, all over the place are going to be coming here. And if they're coming here, they're not coming and going home on the same day. They're going to be visiting our community. They're going to be uh, shopping in stores other th than the outlet mall. They're going to be seeing attractions that are here. They're going to be staying in hotels. They're going to be spending money in our community. So we wanted to make sure that we have a downtown that is attractive, vibrant, and walkable. It is going to be all of those. As well, it's going to be safer and more accessible. There will be additional handicap stalls and overall, more parking spaces in the downtown area than we had previously. Taking action does not mean that we do or build things without examining the need, the implications, the costs, and capacity. It's also about evolving with the times, about adopting to current, adapting to current circumstances. But after that, as municipal leaders, our job is to take action, to make the tough decisions and be the voice and the force that will bring about positive change. Recognizing the current climate, we need to take care of today while still keeping an eye on the future. We have many people in our community that are hurting right now. And it's going to get worse before it gets better. Money troubles, relationship troubles, increases in crime and domestic violence, and housing issues, to name but a few. Our proactive actions with regards to providing additional resources to emergency services will pay dividends in our present and near future in terms of community safety. We also have a strong Citizens on Patrol group, the Nighthawks, that are providing valuable additional eyes and ears for crime prevention. We also have a strong Family and Community Support Services, FCSS, group within the city that concentrates on providing support to the vulnerable or hurting segment of our community with counseling, referrals, education, programs and courses. We are currently evaluating whether they have enough existing resources to meet the additional needs we are seeing today and the likelihood that things will get worse before they get better. I actually should say it is not whether they have enough but how much more they will need. For example, our youth coordinator, coordinator normally has six to ten families with youth that are receiving support as one part of her role. Right now she has 19 clients. As a caring community, we will support those who need it. In the present economic climate, we need to be diligent in our use of tax dollars. We need to spend wisely. But when I say wisely, I don't mean 
cut back on everything we do? Yes, we need to and are looking throughout the organization for efficiencies and tightening our belt. But we are also keeping our eye on the future and making sure we are not saving a dollar now just to create greater costs down the road when something breaks. Again this year, one of our priorities is the 65th and, um, Avenue interchange. We are finally getting closer to this project becoming a reality. We began talking about this and encouraging government to build it in my first term on council when John Jackie was mayor. Here we are 20 years later still working on it. <laughs> However, in the last couple of years, we've made significant progress. The functional design is done and submitted to Alberta Transportation. And you need to understand, the functional design is an important piece that has to happen before an interchange can get built. But it is the last thing that needs to be done before you do the actual detailed engineered drawings. So we are very close. And actually, in terms of Building Canada, um, they are now considering that functional design phase to be part of the project. So we had the foresight to have AT sitting at the table with us while we went through the functional design. And because of that, we, um, well, we know that AT is going to accept the design that was a finally reached because it was the design that AT wanted. So um, we will get that approval. And we also submitted a Building Canada application jointly with the Edmonton International Airport. It seems to have good traction right now from both the federal and the provincial governments. And both have indicated that infrastructure is a priority. I want to take a moment to acknowledge the efforts our MLA, Shea Anderson, has made to keep this project front and center with Minister Mason and his colleagues. Thank you, Shea. And lastly, as I said earlier, we need to look at today's reality, but always, always have an eye on the future. Economic development and future growth will help sustain us into the future. We must never lose sight of telling our story and how we can better diversify to meet our needs and the needs of industry, whether that's local, regional, national, or global. We must also look down the road so we're well prepared to embrace future growth and revenue opportunities. As a testament to that, I'm headed to Ottawa tomorrow to attend the Canadian Sport Tourism Conference. Along with Jim Jones and Janet Guthrie, we will be working to attract events and tourism dollars to our community. This conference is what's, what brought us events like the TELUS Cup, like the uh, World Sledge Hockey Challenge, uh, like the curling championships that we've held here, uh, like uh, next year's um, National Ringette Championships. They, they come from this conference. They come from building relationships at conferences like this. Um, I'm proud to say also that uh, we're up for a couple of awards this year at that conference because of the work that we have done in the past. While I'm there, I'll also be talking with the Infrastructure Ministry about our Building Canada application. This region's overall prosperity is paramount to us, and we are well aware that no one entity can do it all. When you look at the definition of teamwork, I would say we are a positive example. Taking a team approach in how you do business isn't a new idea. However, it is continuously evolving. And because of that, we need to seek unique solutions to common challenges. For example, we've partnered with Leduc County and the Edmonton International Airport as we share a common need and goal of enhancing fire and emergency service delivery to this region. And our solution, we are presently working together to create a single model for fire and emergency services 
to meet our collective needs. As well, we have teamed up with our regional partners, Beaumont, Devon, Kalmar, Thorsby, Warburg, and Leduc County, to find ways to share services and find efficiencies in areas like joint procurement of goods and services. We are also passionate supporters of the Capital Region Board. In addition to our voting seat on the board, we also have representation on a number of subcommittees, such as transit, housing, land use planning, advocacy and monitoring, and governance, finance, and priorities. The work of the Capital Region Board is crucial. It's crucial to the success of the entire Edmonton metro region. Working together on regional issues and opportunities doesn't just result in better planning and a stronger region. It builds relationships between communities. We learn each other's strengths and weaknesses, challenges and opportunities. We're doing that now at the larger region level, but we have been doing it a lot longer at the local level. Leduc County is our friend and closest partner. If you look at your placemat, hopefully you've looked at it already, but if not, make sure that you take a look at it. You'll see as of today, we have 33 joint agreements, programs, initiatives, and events. This is a visible reminder of the strength of our relationship, and it's something we are particularly proud of. The logo, Building Our Best Future, is forward-looking. It incorporates the L's of both Leduc and Leduc County, and has a length of chain in the middle to signify that together we are stronger. Over the past few years, Mayor Whaley and I, and most recently Deputy Mayor DeBlanco, have spoken to audiences throughout the province on the topics of partnerships, collaborations, and our work in exploring alternative governance structures. <coughs> what we have here in the Leduc region truly is special. Other municipal leaders have expressed that they're jealous of what we have. They feel it's inspirational that we have come this far in 11 years to build a common vision and to share goals. Putting the region first, putting people first. It takes a significant amount of effort to partner and collaborate, but it is worth it. It's helping us to be able to continuously improve, to better serve our citizens and this region. Moving forward, we've experienced a lot of change in the past year with new provincial and federal governments, a drop in the Canadian dollar, low oil prices, and the economic downturn that has resulted in many layoffs. I hope I've been able to convey that in spite of all this, through the principles of Kaizen, we will weather this storm. And when you think of the city of Leduc and our region, remember, we are working hard to meet your needs and continue to provide a high quality of life for all our citizens. Thank you.